Hi, I'm Varun Haran. I'm senior editor with Information Security Media Group. I'm speaking with Dustin Maxey, who is the director of marketing for Ping Identity. And we're going to be discussing something that has plagued uh, security practitioners for uh, over a decade now, is this problem with identity and how it's being used. And we're going to be talking about the evolution of identity, the challenges with identity in today's landscape, and what recommendation Dustin can share from his insights from the industry. Thanks, Dustin, for joining us. Of course. Dustin, first question is identity. You know, we have a lot of people who are talking about how identity is the new perimeter because we are essentially living in a perimeter-less world with cloud and you know, mobile and everything else that's going on. Sure. So just walk us through what the evolution of identity has been over the years. Well, initially, you know, everybody was behind a perimeter. You had employees, since they were first trying to access applications, that were in a single building or a single place, and they would access applications in that way. Since then, it's exploded. Not only employees, but customers too. They are accessing applications from mobile devices, from different channels, uh, you know, for retailers interacting in new ways, getting you know, more digital innovation and more channels with, with banks and verticals across the board. So with that new paradigm, you know, there has to be a new way of ensuring that the right people are getting access to the right things. And the way that identity helps with that is by no longer saying, okay, the perimeter is the area that we need to make sure somebody is behind to determine whether they have access, but instead, is this person who they say they are? And we need to know that whether they're behind a perimeter or whether they're not. And the perimeter can't be the main approach anymore, but it can be one variable you know, that we consider. We can consider, are they behind this perimeter also are their credentials correct? And you know what other context about their device or their person are they in? And in those kind of context and those kind of variables can help really identify somebody in this more versatile world that we're in now. Sure. I think context is the important, it's the key word here. Sure. Right? Now, uh, if you talk about identity in the current landscape, and I'm not just talking about the threat landscape, I'm also talking about the technology stack that is in use today. Identity as an idea mm -hmm. is something that we've been using for a long time which probably requires some kind of revision, some kind of an upgrade, right? So what are the challenges with identity uh, as it stands today in today's environment? Sure, so, you know, enterprises today, we hear cloud initiatives and cloud first all the time, but the problem is with a lot of the largest enterprises that are, you know, have the most employees and the most customers uh, to store and manage their identity data, you know, they cannot move all of their applications to the cloud, right? Some are stuck on premise, and some of these on premise applications that they have to manage and that customers and employees need to interact with, uh, you know, they're important. Production application is important to their business. So, what has to happen and where identity can fill a big gap is kind of spanning that gap. And, and we refer to it as hybrid IT or enterprise cloud IAM, meaning that these enterprises have these disparate environments and identity has to interact across those uh, two environments, right? So you can manage identities in a single space no matter which applications or no matter where people are interacting with brands from. So share some recommendations on how practitioners can address some of these challenges with identity today. Sure, so, oh gosh, there's, there's a lot, but I mean, we kind of tend to think of identity in layers, right? So we think of, first, authentication, like who are you? Do we know who you are? And then we think of it as access. Once we know who you are, what do you have access to? And then all the way down to the data layer, right? So the data layer meaning storing credentials, storing data about a person, PII, et cetera. So across those three realms or those three layers, there's a lot of different things you can do, particularly you know, at the top level and the authentication and access layer. Um, you really have to worry there about balancing security and convenience. Um, and we talked a little bit about context earlier, right? So when you take those contexts and you can say, okay, instead of just you know verifying the username and password right let's look at some other things right and we might need to step up to multi-factor authentication at some points but even if you have the most convenient multi-factor authentication mechanism in the world it adds a little bit of friction so how can we reduce that friction to be added only for this you know top tier of risk scenarios where it's actually needed instead of blanketing it and adding that friction for everybody so evaluating context like What's the geolocation of the person? What type of device are they on? Is this device rooted? Uh, and even you know, risk-based authentication type variables, like has this device been used with fraudulent activity before, even outside of our organization's purview? 
So when you put all of those things together, you can kind of minimize the friction that's added and help to balance that you know level of security and convenience. And that's kind of at those top layers, right? right. So taking the onus away from the user to be secure and have that security hygiene, you can change the way identity is approached itself so that it's handled more at the back end, not at the end user level. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it, you know, we rely on the end user traditionally a lot to, to, you know, step up and add that friction, and you want to take that away as much as possible and put that friction on the organization, not on the user who's using your, your applications and tools. So, so just to bring it home, you know, what are some of the technology innovations around identity that excite you most? Oh gosh, uh, there's a lot with multi-factor authentication that I think is, is really cool. Um, Particularly NIST, the National Institute for Standards of Technology, has, has come out a year, year and a half ago or so and said that SMS, which is the way that a lot of people are doing multi-factor authentication, isn't the most secure way to do it. And the reason is because cell phone numbers can move from phone to phone, right? That infrastructure was never meant to be a security infrastructure. Some clever person used it that way, but it was never its purpose. So doing things like embedding you know, SDKs into customer-facing mobile applications that can um, you know, send push notifications from the phone and leverage unique device identifiers are much more secure. So there's some really cool things in the multi-factor authentication realm. I think uh, contextual authentication and then down at the data layer, which we haven't talked about a whole lot, there are things like data access governance that can help you comply with regulations like GDPR and other privacy types of regulations that are obviously on everybody's mind nowadays, even if you're you know, not solely operating out of the EU because they apply just to having EU citizens, right? Even the US or, or other countries. Well, thanks, thanks Dustin for speaking with us. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that was Dustin who's Director of Marketing for Ping Identity. For ISMG, this is Varun Haran. Thanks for watching.